I will call this April 15th, 2024 meeting of the Henry County Board of Supervisors to order. I'd like to welcome all of our visitors. Remind you, if you want to address the board at any of our regular meetings, you must sign up seven days in advance of that meeting to be put on the agenda. The county administrator is a contact person for the board. However, tonight being uh, two separate public hearings, you will have an opportunity to speak. Uh, we will go uh, with the school board uh, budget for fiscal year 24-25, and then we will take the pub, uh, public hearing of the proposed total county budget. We'll set a priority on each of who has signed in, but that does not limit the speakers, uh, the signed in um, uh, members of the public. If they so desire, when their name is called, will have an opportunity to speak first. And then uh, I'll ask if there are any additional uh, people that uh, wish to speak at that time. Again, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out and participating in your county government. With that, um, we will uh, have a little bit of background first on agenda item number five, a public hearing for fiscal year 24-25 budget. Mr. Wagner. As you have before you, as you proposed budget, Okay, thank you. I will open the public hearing uh, to take input on the school board budget first at 7.02 p.m. I'd like to read a brief statement prior to our first speaker. This is a time for public comment. We welcome your participation in tonight's meeting. We're here to listen to you. If you care to come uh, to address the board, come to the podium, state your name and the district in which you live. By coming to the podium, you've agreed that you will exhibit respect for the board, the staff, and its members. Uh, you'll receive the same consideration from the board. Please try to keep your presentation to no more than three minutes. The first name uh, for the proposed school board budget is Dwayne Whitaker. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's Dwayne Whitaker, proud resident of Ridgeway, Virginia. Even more proud to have the best job in Henry County, principal of Magna Vista High School. I appreciate the job and the responsibility that all of you have. I am here tonight to request that you support the budget that our central office staff has put together, and I appreciate all the hard work that they put into that budget. We have vacancies throughout the year at Magna Vista High School. Our most recent one was in a math position. And I feel that the salaries that are on the proposed teacher salary scale has something to do with the number of applicants that I received for that. 75% of those people that have applied are licensed teachers, and 50% of those people that applied are from local divisions connected to Henry County Schools. And I feel the teacher salaries put us in a favorable position to get the best applicants possible to teach the students in Henry County Schools. I recently was able to take a trip to several different parts of Virginia, and every place that I went, I made sure to look at their school board budgets. The starting salaries for Henry County teachers are almost comparable to many of those places in Northern Virginia, which is a great thing. I don't want that to be seen that we're paying them too much. It allows us to be competitive with the whole state of Virginia. I appreciate the hard work that everybody up here does. No one signs up for the pay sitting up there, and I get that. And I appreciate you guys supporting our community and doing everything you can. I just ask that you fully fund the budget proposal that Henry County Schools put forth. It allows us to stay relevant and competitive. Thank you. Thank you. The next name, uh, Mary Martin. Good evening, ladies. 
ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all for including me in the meeting here tonight. I'm, I'm here to ask you to support the school budget that's been submitted because it's fair. It makes up for some of the slight we've had in the last year. And I, I can't find any reason that we can't do it. Now, I don't know if the two new members, uh, I don't know if y'all have had opportunity to read the class of the compensation and classification study for Henry County Public Schools. If you haven't read it, if they can't get you a copy, I'll be happy to get you one. This was done to uh, see where we stand with our teachers pay and our administrators pay compared to surrounding areas. We lose good teachers every day that retire from here and go down to North Carolina and continue teaching. My daughter's been a teacher in this school system for 31 years. And that's a whole lot of dedication to constantly be told we didn't get what we asked for. Now in this study, it shows that our teachers are 6.7% below market. Our administrative support is 9.4% below market. Skilled workers, trade workers, 9% low. Technology administrators, 22.1% below. Assistant principals, 24.4% below. Principals, 18% below. Assistant superintendents, 21.6% below. Directors, 23.6% below the market. Does that not tell you something? I know in uh, November at your meeting, Mr. Wagner here, he presented y'all with a, a raise based off the conference decision study for them, and y'all granted it. It went into effect December the 1st, and now they are here with another raise for you. And I know there's been numerous talks between the school board and Mr. Wagner. There's been lots of discussion, yet what this study recommends for the teachers and the administrators in our school, it's just having no discussion. And if y'all don't approve this, I would really hope that publicly some of you at some point would at least maybe give an interview with Mr. White and explain why you can't. I know that there's some tension from last year with the sales tax thing when it was kept half in the county and it shouldn't have been, it should have been all for the city. But I know everybody that has adult enough not to be still looking at that little boo-boo. So I'm asking you to support the team. Your economic development need, needs a good education. People don't, but they, businesses look at your schools and your education and your ability to present skilled workers. That's one of the most important things y'all have in economic development. And I'm, I, can, I know y'all know that. The difference in what you want to give and what they ask is minuscule. And I, I've looked over your budget, I've looked over their budget, I've scanned this, I've done everything that anybody can do, probably more than a lot of people of that. And I'd really like to see y'all step up to the plate this year and do what you need to do for the Henry County Public Schools. Thank you. I'm afraid to take a guess at the next name, and I hope that uh, I'm correct in the last name. Is it Powell? Yes. Uh, please come forward. I'm, I've, you've got beautiful penmanship, but I wasn't sure of the name. Okay. <laughs> uh, so please identify yourself. Uh, my name is Jennifer Powell. I live in the Ridgeway District. Um, I am the PTO president of Laurel Park Middle School, and I'm also on the parent advisory board meeting um, with the Henry County. Um, I'm just here tonight in support of our budget. Um, I have It's all been laid out for us at the advisory board level. I don't see anything on there that is a want. I think everything is a need, and we really do need that money just to keep our heads above water. When things have to be put off, then you're talking about putting off stuff for years and everything goes up and it's just gonna snowball into us needing more money. But I, I'm just here to to please um, give our our budget support and, and give us the full amount. Thank you. I only have one other name that's signed in. So if you signed in on the school board budget, uh, again, it's your signature, and I wouldn't even take a guess at it. So please come identify yourself. Thank you. 
Uh, my name is Michael Palmer, uh, Ridgeway District. Also, I am a part of the uh, Parent Advisory Board <laughs> and also PTO President of Rich Acres L Elementary School. So I'm also here this evening to fully support uh, the fully funded budget for school budget for 24-25. I know I can talk about numbers, I can talk about statistics, but being that I'm a you know graduate from Henry County Public Schools, also my daughter currently attends Henry County Schools from Rich Acres, we just want to continue that this is, I will say, honestly, I might be biased, is one of the best school systems in the school, I mean, in the state of Virginia. We all have our issues, we all have our problems, but at the end of the day that this is one of the best schools in the district and, and we, we understand them and understood the needs for the budget. We heard, you know, again, like uh, it was stated before, we know these are wants, not, you know, I mean needs, excuse me, not wants, but how we can um, provide that and continue to be one of the best school districts at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else desiring, uh, as part of the public hearing process, to comment on the proposed school board budget? Anyone? Okay. Seeing and hearing no indication as such, I will close the public hearing on the school board budget at 7-11. And thank you to all that uh, came forward to speak. That takes us to agenda item number six, a public hearing for fiscal year 2024-2025 proposed total county budget. Mr. Wagner, do you have any comments on that? No additional comments. Okay. We will open the public hearing at 712 to take input on the total county budget. <clears throat> the first name that I have signed in looks like Tanel Dillard. district I am a local business owner I'm an educator a parent I am a Henry County resident and I am a taxpayer I'm here today on behalf of Carlisle school to request continued or funding for our SRA our SRO excuse me our school resource officer I just want to speak on behalf right now quickly <coughs> as an educator I've worked in several localities where in the private, public, as well as charter sectors, we have had one to two SROs in every school, in addition to private security. I have worked with individuals who have actually been a part of school shootings in the Washington, D.C. district. I, myself, as well as my husband, have been a part of lockdown situations, real life ones, with weapons involved. I possibly would not be here. The outcome would be severely different if we did not have the adequate resource officers that we did in those moments. Every second is critical. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what type of school it is. Safety should not be on the boundary of an academic institution, especially here in our county with our children, our citizens, taxpaying citizens. I am here on behalf, like I said, <clears throat> with my constituents as a mother, as a business owner, as a taxpayer, to just come to you to request the funding um, and work with you to ensure that our students and our safety, as well as our officers, are continued to have safety, rather, because they need support as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> The next name I have is Matt McKinney. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, my name is Matthew McKinney. I'm a resident of the Reed Creek District. I'm a business owner in the Horse Pasture <coughs> District. I'm a board member of Carlisle School. Um, my most important title would be a father to three of the 320 students that are at Carlisle School. Uh, safety is a top priority for Carlisle. Um, I want to start by thanking Sheriff Davis 
for all that he has done to help us with our security, to help us with our safety. I want to thank for the car that was delivered today. It's a big help. Um, statistics show with the SRO and having a vehicle on site that um, the world we live in, it's, uh, it's a sad world. And um, those, um, those incidents greatly go down when you have the car and you have the SRO. Um, I'm here for the love of my kids. The love of your kids uh, makes you do a lot of things you wouldn't normally do. Being here tonight and speaking to you is not something that I would normally do. Told myself I wouldn't be nervous, but my Apple Watch telling me I am. So, <laughs> so uh, I know you care about the safety of kids. I know you care about the safety of all kids. I know you know the importance of safety. Um, your legislative agenda for 2024, uh, the number one point under education was dedicated funding for school resource officers. Um, core agenda, I, I could not agree more with that. Um, you accomplished that. You've accomplished that this year by increasing the funding for the county schools for that purpose. What we're asking is by approving our proposal that you do the same for us. I know that you know the importance of Carlisle to the community. Uh, the EDC, the economic development that you fund, uses Carlisle in all of its promotional materials. It uses us and emphasizes us in its presentations that I know that you have seen to prospective businesses coming into this area. I've had the opportunity to speak with, to most of you in the uh, previous days. I want to thank you for those calls. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your professionalism, your empathy, your help, and your questions. Um, we truly are blessed to have a board that uh, treats its constituents with such um, professionalism. Some of you confirmed that we do already have an SRO, and uh, that's correct. Um, this board, uh, we decided we had to do that this past year. We did that at the cost of education. We had to take money that was not in our budget. We had to take it from education and provide that safety for our school. We felt like we didn't have a choice. We didn't have a choice for our kids. <coughs> We didn't have a choice for our teachers. We didn't have a choice for our administrators. I know we have previous administrators. We have previous teachers that are on this board. We have public safety officials. I know you know how important it is for safety. The other questions that we've had is some seem to question our need. Um, as a board member, as a volunteer on some other um, community organizations that receive funding from the county, they receive that funding from you. Um, to do things in the community that they couldn't do otherwise. I can assure you that I know those situations. I have seen those budgets. I can assure you that Carlisle's need is also genuine in this matter. As a taxpayer, I would never, I would never think that public funds should go for private education. That's just a non-starter as a taxpayer. But we're not asking you to educate our kids. We're asking you to keep them safe. And that's a core function of government. This request that we're asking is 0.40% of your overall budget. That's 0.40%. In closing, I want to thank all of you for your service, your dedication to this community, and your involvement in this board. I know that it's a service. It's not a job. This service requires a time commitment that few of us realize. It requires you to spend your evenings answering phone calls from your constituents, Sometimes it requires you to make difficult and unpopular decisions. But this decision, it's not difficult. It's not unpopular. It has to do with the safety of kids. The decision to grant the full funding that we were asking for for our SOR, SRO tells everyone in Henry County that you feel that the lives of all the kids are important. This decision allows you to accomplish the two most important purposes of government. That's to protect its citizens, and that's to leave this place a better place for our kids. This decision allows you to know that if the worst situation were to happen, that you've done all that you can. I appreciate your time. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, name I have is Jen Rabin. Jen Rabin. I'm in the Irisburg district as well. Um, I have recently returned to Henry County from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I moved here with three of my four children in 2021 
and uh, Carlisle was one of the main reasons that I moved here. Um, I quickly became integrated into supporting our school. All schools, public and private, need support, and Carlisle is not an island in this county. We are impacted by all of the dynamics of Henry County, where we have attrition for well-paying jobs. It impacts us as well. Many of our children are receiving a form of scholarship. Almost 50% of our children cannot afford the full tuition for Carlisle. Behind me, we have several members of our finance committee, and thankfully I'm not on that one yet, but I do hear a lot of our uh, finance discussions um, in our board meetings. Uh, this is my second full year on the board, and what I will tell you about these people is we've got business people, I'm a retired uh, Bank of America executive, we have made some very difficult decisions, just as you all have to look at limited funds and lots of needs. I don't think anyone has come up here with a want. It has all been needs. We have worked very aggressively, as Matt stated, with Sheriff Davis and Lieutenant Colonel Eames. We have partnered with um, businesses in our community. When we identified the um, need for a resource officer, we made that happen. However, as we look forward, it would be very difficult for us to sustain that level without some form of participation from the county. And again, I think I speak for all of us as a parent, as a taxpayer, I, I, the safety of my children is really, really, I hope not dependent on whether they're in one school building versus another school building. And I hope you would consider our request and a, particip a participation level, excuse me, um, of some sort for this year going forward and going forward. Thank you for your time and for your service to our community. Uh, the next name is Beth Gammons. Hello and thank you for your time. I am a Henry County resident for birth, since birth. So we'll just say 40 plus years and we won't put a physical number on that. Um, in particular, a member of the Ridgeway community, which I will say is a wonderful and great community that supports its residents. And it is a truly a great place to raise children. In the last few years, unfortunately, we have seen a rise in school shootings. That is nothing new to any of you or any of the people sitting in this room. We all face the same difficulty with that. And we all want the same outcome with that. And that is to protect our children. As the head of, assistant head of school at Carlisle School, there's nothing more than important to me at the end of the day to know that our students are safe and secure. And they have no harm has come to them. The same that we all want for all our children. Um, in the recent year, um, it has been evident through media, Covenant School in Nashville um, has uh, received and they were threatened by school shooting and unfortunately lost several lives during that time. This has made it a widespread problem for all of us. And what we would like is for everyone um, to know that our school considers this top priority as well. One of um, the major contributors to parents and students feeling safe at any school is an SRO. In the recent study done by the Secret Service that was issued out uh, last week, almost 25% of teachers across this nation have experienced a gun-related lockdown. This need for an SRO to continue for our school is not about Carlisle School. It is about Henry County children. That's all it's about. It's not a political statement. It's not any of those things. This is just wanting to keep our children safe, and we are asking for that help from you today. I personally would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to you for listening to us today and seeing this great democratic process that we have, it should be respected. 
I also would like to thank Henry County Sheriff's Office for their unwavering support of all our schools, including Carlisle School, and helping us to make our lockdown procedures more accurate, more precise, and also providing us different resources and learning opportunities that we have been able to take advantage of. And I would also like to say that they are an invaluable resource to this community, and our Henry County Sheriff's Office is second to none. And that, I truly believe, by the community in which we all take a benefit to live in. This is the reason that our children, along with all the children, need to have the support of our community with regards to safety. It is not an us versus them, and I've never experienced that feeling ever in Henry County, and that should be commended. I'd ask for that one of you make a motion to amend the proposed budget, followed by a second. I appreciate all of your time and consideration. Thank you. The next name is uh, Ben Gravely. Ben Gravely. He actually came by earlier somewhere. He thought it was a 5.30 meeting, got some misinformation, so he said he wouldn't be back. All right. That that is all the names that have signed the list, but that does not limit us. Is there anyone else wishing to uh, comment during this public hearing for the total county budget? Yes, sir. Please come forward and identify yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Lewis Turner. I live in the Reed Creek District of the county. I'm here. In, in, from two directions. I'm the provider of my resources to you and my taxes, which probably is uh, inadequate. And I'm a user as, of your funding efforts uh, as, a, as a trustee of the Root Blue Ridge Regional Library Board. Um, I know how difficult it is for you to and the efforts that you put forth in taking the resources that you have and distributing to the many needs of the county. And I truly appreciate the, the efforts that you go through to get that done. Um, as a user, you know, you never get enough. Uh, you think you do, but you realize you, it gives me a conflict. I want to give you as little as I can on this end, but I don't want to get more in return on the other end. I know that's not fair. And I know you do the best job that you can in resourcing all of the activities of the county. And I think from the standpoint of the library board, uh, we are very appreciative of the support that you've given us for X number of years. Uh, and we are appreciative also to the efforts of Martinsville and, and Patrick County and, and their contribution. So I thank you in that respect uh, for what you do for us and appreciative for the effort of the ent entire board for what they do for the county. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board on uh, this public hearing for the total county budget? Anyone else? Seeing and hearing no indication as such, I will close the public hearing for the total county budget at 7.28 p.m. Mr. Wagner, do you have anything prior to um, us um, having any discussion? Board members, um, uh, do you have anything? And uh, if, if I could ask if we would uh, kind of stay on the same level of if you have anything on the proposed school board budget that you would like to comment on. Okay. And I guess just I'm one of the things that in running for this position I talked about was transparency and you know I think you know people come out I think it would be great to hear you know why we didn't fully fund the school budget you know what the reasons were for that um, and you know just to be transparent so people do get an understanding of why that did not take place any other uh, member of the board wishing to comment on the uh, school budget. 
Mr. Wagner, uh, I have one uh, question. Is there absolutely any indication as to when we will have a state budget, either from the governor or the General Assembly? Well, by law, it has to be approved by June 30th. Um, and based on our assessment at this point, I would not be surprised if it was uh, well into June before we got a finalized state budget, which, as you know, will have a tremendous impact, particularly on the revenue side. Uh, of both the school budget and constitutional officers. So we do not have you know, firm information from the Commonwealth at this time. And as you have stated um, in our budget presentation, um, what is your expectation as far as an amended school budget once we receive that? It is my understanding with the governor's the recent <coughs> amendments, it would provide additional funding to the school system, and it would be incumbent upon this board at that time to uh, amend the budget to accommodate those additional state revenues, and it would most likely require you to contribute additional local revenues. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the board on the school budget before we move to the total county budget? do want to recognize that we have uh, numerous school board members here. I see a uh, member, uh, Mr. Hardy, Ms. Durden, uh, Chairman uh, Martin, as well as uh, our school superintendent, our uh, um, finance uh, director, our facilities director, as well as many administrators within the school system, and uh, some of which have been identified as uh, Mr. Whitaker that uh, came forward. So. I do uh, appreciate all of you being here, those that are either in administrative functions uh, or uh, those that are school board members. Hopefully I didn't leave a board member out. Uh, Mr. Adams, I'd like to ask, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Mr. Wagner, you mentioned that there may be additional funding for the schools. Do you have any idea of how much additional funding and will that, um, I guess that, you know, we've funded about 2.3 million of the additional 4 million or so that they asked for. Will that be covered in that, or will that still be a shortfall with the state and what we'll have to give locally? It's really hard to project. Uh, the school budget request was based on the original governor's budget that was done in December. Uh, so their request for the required match was based on that percentage, which you know, we matched all the re local required contribution. In addition, uh, we increased the local discretionary match by another 10% over what we've done in the past. Uh, however, the 3% uh, that's proposed for teacher raises, there'll be additional revenue for <coughs> teacher salaries. But to answer your question specifically, uh, you know, we do not have any information coming from the Commonwealth how that number would change as far as what, what impact it have on the budget. However, I, I do anticipate it being positive in the sense that uh, there would be additional revenue going to the school system above and beyond what's been put in this budget document. Okay, and with what we've currently proposed, what would be the reasons that we wouldn't have gone, you know, further to give the school what they requested? Just you know, from a transparency standpoint, what are some of the reasons that we wouldn't have um, included that additional 2.3 million or so? And my numbers may not be exactly right, but whatever we didn't fund. Yeah, so uh, developing a, a budget uh, to provide essential government services of education, public safety, law enforcement, uh, and other items that's important for our community's vitality and economic prosperity, uh, we have to take all those things into consideration. And uh, I think you've heard me say this before, that every, every dollar in this budget is important to someone. So it becomes a very delicate balance in determining where those dollars go. Um, based on the information we receive from the Commonwealth, based on the information we receive from the school system, uh, based on balancing those needs with other departments and their requests, based on what we uh, as a, a board and the staff discussed at a plan session back in February and what you all established as priorities uh, for the board and um, the, the notion that I received that it was the, the um, that our community could not withstand a tax increase at this time. I felt the number presented in this budget document accomplishes all those goals without raising taxes. 
And then I guess my only other question is, um, Ms. Mary Martin mentioned about the 6.7% below market for teachers, 21% for APs, 18% below for principals. What, are we, what can we do? What are we going to do to find this additional revenue? Because we did um, initiate the salary study, and I think it's difficult for people to hear that they're underpaid, and yet we don't have any means of making sure that we bring them up to market value. What are some of the things that we can do? What do you recommend to us as a board to make sure that we find an additional revenue so that if not this year, somewhere in the very near future, we can make sure that uh, we're able to better compensate our staff so that we don't have folk who are leaving or getting out of education totally? Yeah. Thank you for that question. And it essentially comes down to Where's the revenue coming from? It's either got to come from the Commonwealth, because it's got to come from user fees, or it's got to come from taxes, um, or a cut in service to another department. So it's really balancing your priorities of uh, what's most important. Is it uh, okay to cut other departments to fund additional salaries or needs in the school system? Is it uh, the right time to, to raise taxes on our citizens and put that burden uh, on our property owners? And, uh, so it, that's really the simple answer is uh, we either cut services or we raise taxes. And I did say that was my last question, but I do have one other question based off of what you said. Do we, if we were to better pay folk, do we feel like they would then invest some of those funds back into the community and those funds would, you know, somehow find their way back to us and would help us do the things that we need to do? That's a master's level thesis that you just asked there. <laughs> uh, if you increase government spending, does it lift the level of your community? Uh, and it depends on uh, what perspective you are on the political realm, whether uh, increased government spending improves the economy or takes it away from the people who earn it. So uh, I, I would prefer not to answer that question for you, Mr. Hill. OK. All right. Um, okay, now um, take comments on the uh, proposed total county budget, and there was uh, two members of the board that indicated that they uh, might have some questions. I'll begin with Dr. Cobbler. Thank you, Chairman. My comments and potential questions are very generic. First thing is I've had since my campaign, during my campaign and since my campaign, some thoughts about the messaging and as I have been a, an elected official, I have been full of hope, and that's the messaging that I would also like to start with the great things that are happening in the county. And I know that the county's not broke, so the messaging is that we do have uh, funds. And when I say not broke, I will uh, ask Mr. Jones if um, you would discuss a bit, or Mr. Wagner, the conversation that I had with you both about the amount of funds that Henry County has and what it means by, and this is very, I understand elementary information, but I feel like that because I've had so many questions about it, what it means, how much money Henry County has what's referred to as cash, and then what's encumbered and what's in reserve. I am getting questions about that. We had a discussion. If nothing else, just explain to the public what that means, please, in our budget. All right, so uh, a lot of the uh, citizens and general public look at the county bank account and say well, they have $90 million in the bank, so they've got plenty of money. But you have to look at money that's already been committed for purposes uh, that isn't available on the for discretionary funding. So, for example, you might have $90 million in the bank, but at the end of any certain point in time, like at the end of your fiscal year, you can have more than $60 million of that committed. It's like uh, you, you may have money in your personal bank accounts, but you've Place some orders on Amazon and you haven't paid for those bills yet. But then those, those items are coming in, so you're going to have to pay from it from your account. So a lot a lot of the money that we have in the bank uh, has been committed 
for a variety of purposes. Uh, a purchase order that has been put in uh, at, at the end of the fiscal year, uh, economic development, uh, capital projects that have not been completed. So uh, at, at June 30th, 2023, we had more than 60, 60 million dollars of the 90 million basically that we had committed uh, for things that we had ordered or projects we had started uh, that we had not expended at that moment in time. And so uh, our, our, our financial policy requires that we maintain a certain level of funds. Uh, and we got there by more than a decade ago when we started exploring that we had to build an adult detention center because the one we had was inactive. So we uh, engaged Davenport Advisors, uh, a well-known financial advisory firm in Richmond, to walk us through the process that we were going to have to do to get there in to, to basically build and pay for this uh, adult detention center. So as a part of that, we did not have a financial policy, and they immediately said, if you go to the market and try to borrow money with no financial policy, first of all, no one will probably lend you the money. And if you do, you're going to be considered like junk bond status, and your interest rate is going to be sky high. So we immediately worked with them based on their recommendations to, to establish a financial policy. And that financial policy dictates that we maintain 18% of our budgeted revenues as a minimum of fund balance. So as our budget goes up each year, 18% of an increasing budget means there's an increasing amount that we must maintain to, to maintain that financial policy. If we do not maintain that financial policy and in the future we ever do go to borrow money, we may not find anybody to lend us the money because it, it, we, if we break our own policy, it's not going to be looked upon very favorably. So part of that is set aside as uh, for the rate, the rate agencies in New York, uh, um, Moody's, Standard and Poor's, uh, Fitch's. They basically work with us and look at our financials each year. They they quiz us on what we do and how we put our budget together, what our audit report looks like. And they basically give us a bond rating each year. And that bond rating is very important if we ever go back to market to borrow money again. So part of, part of the funds that we have in the bank is dedicated for specific purposes. Things that we've ordered, uh, capital projects we have not completed. Part of it is set aside based on our financial policy that this money cannot be touched or if this county ever goes back to, to the market to borrow money again and we have violated that policy, we will never find anybody to lend us money unless we pay uh, rates that are totally unaffordable to us. Okay. So does that help answer? Yes, thank, thank you for a sophisticated answer. I think we get it that 90, 98 million, it appears that we have 98 million in cash, but really the money is encumbered, in, in reserve, and almost spent, and or basically, basically spent. Just wanted to put that out there again because I've been getting a lot of questions. People are looking at the documents online. They are looking at the budget. I'm getting questions. I think that was a very sufficient answer. And I'd also like to say congratulations on having some cash and having uh, a, a, a budget where it is in, in excess of what we need for the bonds and for the, the debt coverage and, and all of that. I think, that's, I think that's good work. Again, it's part of the messaging. The messaging that I'm saying as a supervisor where we should get a megaphone and stand on top of the buildings, the administration building, on the top of NCI, on the top of the schools, and say we have some of the greatest schools in Virginia. We do have comparable teacher salaries. We are not broke in Henry County at all. 
Also, we have one of the greatest sheriff's department, I would say, in the country, in Virginia, on the East Coast. So thankful for the economic development that's going on. So for me, what I would like to do is, again, I'm repetitive, but, but help with the messaging of the great things that are going with the people in Henry County. And I'll go quickly, Mr. Mr. Chairman. The second thing is, uh, you've, you've answered that with the encumbering. The other thing is, just just went to the PSA uh, meeting and I'm hearing that, that we have some of, some of the cleanest water in the entire country. That's, that's amazing, that's just one more thing. So I'd just like to point out that just generally the messaging, I would like to see that change because again, as a supervisor, I have become, every meeting I go to, uh, shout out to the Bassett folks, the Greater Bassett Association, who they as constituents in Reed Creek clean up their, their trash on the road. So they, they meet once a month and then they decide when they're gonna pick up the trash. It's just, again, a meeting I'm attending and the great things that the men and women and people of, of our county and specifically the Reed Creek area, the great things that they're doing. That's all, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. May I ask Mr. Jones, how often do we borrow money? Uh, we borrowed uh, three separate borrowings to uh, complete the ADC. We borrowed to build uh, Meadowview Elementary School, two loans to build Meadowview okay. Meadow Elementary School. And then we refinanced Meadowview uh, later on to get a better interest rate because we had a good bond rate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so that I don't misquote a figure, uh, Mr. Wagner, um, as a, uh, two things. Uh, one of the things that you brought out in the PSA meeting that Dr. Cobble and I attended prior to this meeting was a uh, opening of bids on grading lot two, which of course takes money. What uh, kind of money are we talking about there? So the, uh, we did open bids last week and we'll be bringing a recommendation for you all for consideration of the water contract for the low bidder on that project. And the grading project is uh, just the contractor's portion, not counting the environmental permits and other aspects of the project. But for this one contractor, it's $24.2 million we'll be bringing to you on uh, next Tuesday for us. And one other uh, thing while we're on finances by maintaining a financial policy, what was the positive side and interest gained on that money? Uh, uh, you indicated when we uh, uh, had the budget, and, and again, a, a ballpark figure I think is fine. So we increased our budget um, considerably based on interest income, which if we did not have the money in the bank, we would not be receiving a very favorable interest income and if I remember correctly, I can't put my finger right on it if you want to give me a minute to find it, but we've increased our revenue over the past two years by $2 million simply by interest income. Um, you all are well aware that our real estate prices um, assessments have not changed because we have not had an assess assessment in several years. So really, other than interest income and new construction is the only new revenue coming into Henry County right now. And we're able to even propose what we are in this budget simply because of the interest income and the additional revenue coming from the common. Interest income. Uh, we have increased our budget for interest, interest income a little over $2 million because we're in a very favorable environment right now that we had been. Actually, interest income is uh, outpacing borrowing, correct? To a certain degree. For many entities such as governments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Buchanan, you had indicated prior to the meeting that you would like an opportunity to comment on the total county budget. I had. Um, a couple of things, and um, Pam had touched on a, on a few things, but I was hearing the people from Carlisle, and, and I, I want uh, to have a better understanding, and I want the people to have a better understanding of what uh, Henry County does provide in the way of an SRO. Carlisle has an SRO, but Henry County Sheriff's Department also participates uh, in that, in the training. And if I, if I could, could I have Sheriff Davis come up a minute? Certainly. Okay. 
Let me see if I can. Good evening, members of the board. All right, Sheriff, could you kind of give us a breakdown on what your office provides when it comes to the SRO that is currently at Carlisle? Sure, I'd like to start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, well over a year ago, I was contacted by Ms. Gracie Agnew, the former administrator at Carlisle. She asked us if we would partner with them to participate in increasing their security efforts. We were very thankful for the opportunity to do so and glad to do it. So we began uh, very simply doing some security assessments and walking through the initial phases of lockdown drills. After that, uh, there was some discussion about adding an SRO at Carlisle. So we had already put in place the elementary SROs here in the county. And so we entered into an agreement with the county schools that the sheriff's office would fund the training and equipment and continual fees for those deputies. And the school system would pay the hourly rate, which was set at $35. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that for the Henry County Schools That's or for, for County Carlisle? County. Okay. So I'll come around to Carlisle. Okay. So the agreement we put in place is we select a school resource officer, we equip them. So to equip one officer is a little over $10,000 upfront initial cost. There's $500 in the annual academy fees. They're required to have a minimum of 40 hours of continuing education annually. That's at the expense of the sheriff's office. And the sheriff's office pays those school resource officers $20 an hour for any continual education and training hours that they're away from the school. So all that's paid for through the current sheriff's office budget. So when Carl and I discussed adding a school resource officer, uh, we felt it was fair and equitable to offer them the same, essentially, the contract that we deal with the county elementary schools. So that's the exact same thing we have in place with Carlisle. They pay the hourly rate at $35 an hour for which time that SRO is at the school, and I believe it's seven hours a day, is that correct? Which uh, equates to a little over $43,000 annually that Carlisle pays the school resource office. Okay, and I know that you can't answer this, but um, I was hearing a couple of the people that were talking. Um, what percentage of the students that go to Carlisle are actually from Henry County? Do you I'm, know? I'm not able to speak on that at all. Mr. Wagner? I, I think that information was provided, but I don't recall. Okay. Okay. Does anybody, does anybody have that? Let me ask that. Let me ask the... Um, let me find her name. Beth Gammons. Yes, Beth, can you answer that for me? We have 130 students that are Henry County residents. 130 Henry County out of, somebody said 320 students there. Is that right? Okay. So, I'll get to it. Okay. All right. Um, now, something that was said, Carlisle is a private school Carlisle is, is a private school, but now are you for profit or non-profit? Non what now? Non-profit. So you're a non-profit. So actually, uh, real estate and all is not taxable through Henry County. Is that correct? Mr. Wagner? It's my understanding, and based on my research, Carlisle is a 5013C non-profit oh, okay. private educational institution. And uh, the best act information I can get, they do not pay taxes on real estate in here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there's not a tax implication to Henry County in, in, the, in regard to real estate. All right, that was one of my questions. Okay. All right, that's what I needed to know. Thank you, Sheriff Davis. Mr. Chairman, can I have a second? Yes, sir. My question, too, is what uh, Ms. Buchanan just asked. Uh, out of the total students at Carlisle, you said 130? Mm, that, that's what she said, 130. 130 some, some odd students was from Henry County. Uh, mm -hmm. Where is the risk there is that they're made up of? Pennsylvania County, Marshall City? It's the biggest draw there. Has anything been asked of the Pennsylvania County's Board of Supervisors or the Marshall City Council to share in a resource officer, paying resource officer, because after all, 
it looks like the vast majority of students are coming from other areas also. Has that been addressed? If there's a mass casualty event at Walmart, do we go in and ask where the people reside before we say? No, you can't. But the fact is that these students are there permanent going to school there. I'm just, that's just a question I'm asking. And I'm not, I'm not sticking it. I'm just saying, you know, the, these students are, are at Carlisle. You know, Which they, is in the county. Excuse me? Which is in the county. Yes, they are. But it, so that would be who would respond to a call. Right. It would typically be the county. All right. Just a question. Thank you. Any questions? Excuse me? Any additional questions? Oh, no, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dillard. Well, I mean, if we're done, I just have some general comments in reference to the budget Certainly. process. And, you know, I do want to say that, you know, it was good to see that we did give some additional funding in places that we hadn't in the past. Um, but I would like to see us, the board members, more directly involved. I know we have our planning session, but I'd love a one-on-one -on -one conversation or at least a small group where we are sharing some specifics about what we would like to see with the budget. And, you know, I, I, I'm a words lover, and, you know, this budget process to me is kind of like we're going to Virginia Beach, and then we get to Williamsburg, and, you know, Mr. Wagner asks us if we're taking the best route. And if not, we've got to go all the way back to Martinsville and start over. And that's kind of how this budget is, because if we make any changes, you pretty much have to, if we go outside of the number that we have set, that's going to reset all the timelines, go back, have meetings, and it's going to you know, push everything backwards um, and slow everything down. So that's why I would love to have these conversations earlier so that we get more of an input on what we're thinking. Um, and I know that, like I said, we do have our planning meeting, and that's more of a generic, we're sharing thoughts, sharing ideas, but it would be great to sit down and have the conversations about budget, what we would like to see, what you're thinking, what you're thinking about the schools, what you're thinking about the sheriff's department, and getting our direct thoughts on that. And that's not in any way a, a knock on you and your team. That's just we're the ones that sign off on this. And I believe that anything that I sign off on, and I'm sure my colleagues feel the same way, if I'm signing off on it, I want to know that my input was directly involved and not you know, captured through a, a planning session or captured through a comment that I made at a, a particular meeting um, and also just having more time you know we get the packet on a Tuesday then we have the Thursday conversation and you know shortly after that we have our public hearing and it's um, you know it's difficult for me you know being in this situation because there are lots of thoughts lots of ideas that I have but you know I think um, I did want to share that, and hopefully that's something that you and your team can look at as far as getting us more directly involved moving forward earlier in the process. Okay. Are there other comments? One quick thing, yes, sir. and I'll be right through. No, that's I didn't fine. mean to try to apply that I don't acknowledge your concern, because I really do. You know, I have grandkids that went through our county schools, and, you know, one of my worst fears was somebody coming in and having harm to them or any other students in the county. You know, uh, I look at things in a sense that I was elected to try to look out for the best of the county period and also the council district that I serve. And I wanna make sure when I do things that I know all the facts before I make a decision on the things that I do. When it comes to making a, a county budget, I've been here for going on 14 years, um, I see the importance it is to try to know all these facts before you make a decision. You know, the budgets that we set are real difficult to do. We have to make major decisions on things that we're going to do before we do them. Uh, and sometimes you just got to do the things that you think are right, regardless whether some people think you're wrong in doing it. Uh, and that happens just about every year we do a budget we have a lot of people that get sealed at us for making decisions that they don't think it was right but we in fact you know think that we're doing the best for our community and not to say that after the budget is not done that there is not allocations that we can't take care of other things but the fact that when a budget is set it's very as, as mr diller says it's very very difficult to go in and change that budget figure because once you change anything around if you take a little bit from the school board, 
to go towards public safety. The school board's going to be mad. You take anything from the service department to go to the school board, they're going to be mad. So I just want you all to know it is a difficult decision that we as six supervisors got to make for the county. Other comments before I direct something back to Mr. White? Yes, very, Dr. Very, quick, very quickly. Also, thank everybody for coming and, and speaking to the board. That's the other thing that we've talked about is open communication or more communication. I'm inviting people to come to the board meetings. They'll say something to me and I'll say, well, have you been to a board meeting or ask them that? So I really appreciate people stepping to the microphone and speaking with us and really want to encourage people to come to the board meetings and continue communicating with us. The last thing is that I, I consider myself a pro professional asker. So I love it when people ask, and I'm encouraging people to keep asking. Great. Okay. Thank you. We do, we do know, leaving here tonight, uh, that we have a gap that we have not been able to identify, and that's what the uh, General Assembly is going to fund us uh, uh, as far as schools, and that is a significant gap or significant unknown. Uh, as indicated by others, uh, um, we have throughout the course of the year different decisions to make on things outside of the budget and we come back to the board and sometimes uh, the school board comes to us and because things happen, things pop up uh, uh, and uh, we consider that uh, on an um, individual basis. Mr. Wagner, uh, for the board's identification, what is the next step of the budget process? You have met all your legal obligations as far as the budget is concerned as of today. Uh, you are expected to approve a school budget prior to May 1st, and then the total county budget would have to be approved and appropriated before June 30th. Uh, your budget calendar called for tentatively for approval at your next Board of Supervisors meeting on April 23rd uh, to approve both the school budget, total county budget, and to set the tax rates. Okay. Any questions in regard to that? If not, uh, I will accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? It's 6-0, Jennifer. Everyone have a good evening.